Now let's look at the main tab. We'll focus on the lower section here first. This first option is for the maximum number of voices that can be played by a patch. It ranges from 2 all the way up to 16 voices. Let's set it to 2 for now. So if I hold down more than two notes, the oldest note will be removed. This is called voice stealing. So you should notice that when I played the higher D, the lower D was removed. Okay, next is stack, which is for unison voices. So when holding down one note, the voices can be doubled, tripled, or even up to six voices can be layered together. So it's probably going to be loud, so I'll bring down the volume a bit. When compared back to a single voice, you can hear the difference. Unison is not going to sound that interesting as is. It gets more interesting when the voices are detuned. We'll look at this in more detail when we get to the Tremors tab. Okay, next is the mode, which is set to polyphonic right now so we can play more than one note at a time, the number of notes being limited by the voice limit set. In monophonic mode, only one note will play at a time. Legato works the same as monophonic, but the difference is in how the envelopes are triggered. Let's make envelope 2 modulate the cutoff of the filter. It's already assigned here, so I'll just increase the depth. I'll bring down the cutoff a bit. Okay, now let's try this in the monophonic mode. Now, even though I'm playing in a legato fashion, the envelope is re-triggering every time a new note is triggered. Let's try the legato mode now. You can hear the envelope only re-triggers when I release all notes. Otherwise it stays at the sustain value. So that's the main difference between the mono and legato modes. Next is duo, which has a very unique way of operation. In this mode, there's only a maximum of two note polyphony, and the second note will be generated by the second oscillator. So when I play two notes, the first oscillator will take the lower note and the second oscillator will take the higher note. As you can hear, bringing down the level of the first oscillator will also bring down the first note. A very interesting way of dealing with polyphony. Okay, and lastly, there's the poly 2. In this variation of the polyphonic mode, Voice sealing happens at the release stage of an envelope. So I'll turn on the release on this envelope. We're set to two voices. So when I play a note after releasing the previous note, you will hear the first voice gets cut. In the normal poly mode, this would not happen. Both the notes are heard in the release stage. So this poly 2 can be helpful to use in patches that use a lot of voices and have long release stages. Having some of the voices that are in the release stage cut can help maintain a high polyphony. I'll set this back to mono for now. The next option, note priority, only applies to the mono and legato modes. It's set to lowest right now. That means the lowest node will always take priority in a performance. So as you can see, none of the higher notes are heard as I'm still holding down the lower D. Only when I release it do you hear the higher ones. In highest, the opposite happens. So if a higher note is held down, any lower notes will not be voiced. And in last, the last note held will take priority. This is the more conventional way of having a monophonic voicing setting. This large knob is the master output control. 
here we can change the color of the LEDs. This would apply to all the LEDs on effects as well. Now these next two options relate to the output quality of the sound that Diva produces and in result will also affect the CPU being used. There are four options here, Draft being the lowest quality with lowest CPU usage and Divine being the best quality with the highest CPU hit. I'm going to load a patch. This one's created by Howard Scar. It's called I Can't Believe It's Not Analog. And let's take a look at the CPU usage in draft accuracy. I'm just going to play one note. You can see it's quite minimal. It goes up a bit when multiple voices are played. Let's switch over to Divine. You can see it's much more significant and with multiple voices it takes up even more CPU. Generally when you have high resonance in patches, a lot more CPU is being used. I would normally set this on fast or great if I don't have too many instances of D.Va in a session. But keep in mind, I'm running an i7 at 2.6 GHz. Mileage will vary based on your CPU specs. If your DAW has offline bounce, you can choose for the bounce to be the same as selected in the accuracy or switch it to best to get the divine sound out of D.Va. While dealing with CPU issues, I've noticed that the best thing to do is freeze or just print these instrument tracks to audio. There's also a multi-threaded option that will distribute voices across multiple cores if you have a multi-core CPU. Try out these options and find what works best for you because it will never be the same for everyone. But if you're using multiple instances of Diva in a session, it's best to have this off for most of them. Alright, in the next tutorial, we look at the tuning and amp and pan section.